What can we pray? But Lord, may our worship be honest, for there is no need with God to present only our polished best. What can we pray? But Lord, may we worship eyes wide open to the world, for it's the world God loves, not the few. The world God calls us to love too. What can we pray but, Lord, gentle us and help us to live as we worship? For God calls us on Mondays as well as Sundays to gratitude and joy. And so let us pray. Loving God, 
Here we are wanting to tell you the honest, deep down truth of it. Here we are longing to trust you and to know we are held. Here we are begging you to cut through the clutter, your glory for the grey of our days. Lord, here we are to give ourselves head, hand, and heart to you. And we pray for the kingdom's sake we might not leave unchanged. Amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn 510. Jesus calls us here to meet him. And today we're leaving out the final verse him 510. go on worshipping in our prayers of thanks and confession and we say together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, how few the opportunities we take to say thank you for all we know you to be, for all we are learning of your ways. But we will not let this one pass. For forgiveness, even when we do not ask it, we thank you. For compassion, even when we fail to show it, we thank you. For healing, even when we can't believe it, we thank you. Lord, there are so many reasons to thank you, and we do. In the quiet of this place, we gather up our thanks to you and know you delight in them all. Lord, we thank you for the ways in which your love is known and shown in the between of us. For the hand in ours when we feel at sea and sinking. For the stranger who makes us smile when we thought we'd forgotten how. For the friend whose faith carries us when our own is tired and tried and found wanting. 
for the voice that soothes us, the song that moves us, the story that draws us home. Lord, there are so many reasons to live with a thankful heart. We pray we never tire to see them. In the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to pray in words such as these, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I don't know if anyone here likes to play games. Um, I asked... I did a little straw poll before coming, and, and the first person I asked said, tiddlywinks, which is not what I was expecting. <laughs> um, we, on wet days um, this week, you know, school holidays, wet days, um, we found ourselves playing Cluedo, and I don't know if you've tried to play Cluedo recently, but it takes so long to set up, and by the time you've kind of understood it, they've, they've gone away, <laughs> and they've left you to it by yourself. But I wanted to ask if you play a game with me today, and it's called Yes, No, Maybe. And it's very simple. I just make a proposition, and you have to decide yes, no, or maybe. And if you want to shout it out, then that would be even better. And if you're listening at home and want to join in, um, yeah, go for it, shout out. But if you're listening on the bus, then <laughs> maybe not. Um, so here we are. Three, three propositions. A cuddle with a koala bear. A walk with a fairy penguin? <laughs> what about a boxing match with a kangaroo? <laughs> no, you like having teeth, I guess. <laughs> Here's a food one for you. Mince and tatties? Mince and chips? <laughs> what about a mince pie sandwich? Ooh, what was that noise? I, <laughs> was, that a, was that a yes? <laughs> really? All that gravy dribbling it? Oh my goodness me. <laughs> uh, okay, let's keep going. A night at the theatre? A night on the beach? Maybe, maybe. What about a night in your favourite armchair? Yeah, we've gotten a bit used to that, haven't we, over the last while? It's a bit difficult to get out of it sometimes. This one's a bit more abstract. Glass half empty. Oh, <laughs> pessimists are all there. Um, glass half full. What about a cup that never runs out? Mm. <laughs> Depends what's in it, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, one more. Here we are. Um, no more school. What, what would the children and grandchildren say? <laughs> what about school even on weekends? That wouldn't go down well in my house, not at all. What about letting kids be the teachers? <laughs> the teachers would be a whizzes with their mobile phones by the time they got their play pieces out, wouldn't they? <laughs> They'd be down there. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. We make a lot of decisions every day, don't we? And sometimes we don't even think about it. Today in worship, we're going to think about what it is to say yes to someone and just how significant that can sometimes be for them. But first, we're going to sing again. We're going to sing Meekness and Majesty, which is hymn 356, hymn 356.
We draw in some words that Trish was reading for us there in our prayers for ourselves and for others. Let us pray. Come and drink, my beloved children, from the water that gives you life, love, and joy. Many are thirsty in the world, thirsty for words which heal and do not hurt for small kindnesses to soothe bigger sores, for solidarity, someone to stand by their shoulder so they don't have to carry this all alone, for freedom from other people's fears and to just be and be themselves. Lord, May there always be a place for them here among your people, always a welcome. May they know warmth and newness and delight. May they drink deeply of your life, love and joy. We pray for those known to us whose days are difficult for now, friends, family, neighbors. We name them in our hearts, knowing you love each and every soul.
Lord, for all these, may there be a blessing, an embrace, a promise. And may we never fear to be your hands, your heart on earth, helping them drink deeply of your life, your love, your joy. Lord, we pray today for the family and friends of Sir David Amos, MP, and for all those whose lives have been forever changed by violence. We pray for the people of Lee on Sea, not least the worshipping community of Belfair's Methodist Church, where Amos had his life taken. Lord, we pray for all communities, shocked and afraid. May there be someone to listen, to hold their stories, especially when no sense can be made of them. Many are thirsty in the world. Lord, help us to help you, that all might hear you say to them, Come and drink, my beloved children, from the water that gives you life and love and joy for the world's sake. And in Jesus' name, amen. Now we sing hymn 97. O God, you search me and you know me. Hymn 97. thought about him often in the years since I first met him, when I've led their, a family to their seat ahead of a funeral service, when I've stood at a front door that I've never walked through before, when I've sat in the wee small hours wrestling with words, I hear his words. His name was Tommy, 
And he was one of the first people I met in Fraserburgh early on in my ministry. He was known locally as Tommy the Butcher. He wasn't part of a criminal gang. He actually was a butcher. But he was very much retired by the time I met him. But he had for many years worked out of a small supermarket on the west end of the town. The first time I met Tommy, he told me about a recent journey he'd made in prayer. The last minister had left some months ago after a long ministry. Tommy had been alpha disappointed, he said, that the minister was away. But, well, he just got on with praying for the next one. I made a mental note to myself, Tommy the butcher is a pragmatist. In my heat, he said, I was praying for a manny. <laughs> you could add some subtitles, Morag, for the people that are listening at home. In my heat, I was praying for a manny. All the ministers he'd known had been men. And in fact, the last three ministers in post, all men had managed to notch up a very impressive century between them. In my heat, I was praying for a manny. But then I heard it was a wifey that was coming to preach. And so I started praying for a wifey. Another mental note to self, Tommy is open-minded as well as a practical thinker. But, he continued, but now, McQueen, now you're here. And now when I pray for the minister, I pray for you. Final note to self, Tommy is a man who knows how to say yes. And not just yes, but yes. I was the first female minister to arrive in the town, and my arrival no doubt required a change of mindset for some. Maybe that's why I find myself on the front page of the local newspaper before I'd even finished unpacking the boxes. But here was Tommy, seeing beyond tradition and stereotype, seeing beyond even his own experience, and that can be a hard one for us to master. Here was Tommy gently and generously pledging his prayerful support to this wet-behind-the-ears minister wifey. Here was Tommy saying a great big yes to me, to who I was, and to all I'd been called to Fraserburgh to do, and more importantly, to be. If Tommy is praying for me today, it's from the other side of the grave. But his yes to me in the early days of ministry has stayed with me through the years. We listened to two scripture stories this morning, one from the beginning of scripture and one from near the end. Both in their different ways tell of God saying yes. Yes to the world and to hope and healing. Yes to us. Archbishop Desmond Tutu has a wonderful way of painting pictures as he retells both the Genesis and Revelation stories. We mustn't be afraid of a retelling. Such an act can give a new breath to a text, can allow a story to be heard and you, perhaps even for the first time. Day after day, the first story goes, God speaks love into being until there is only a human-shaped hole in the unfolding. Then God said, I will make people, and I'll make them just like me so they can enjoy the earth and take care of it. He did just as he had said, and it was also very, very good. God is saying yes to the world he has made and to us in it. God looked at everything he'd made and clapped his hands together in delight. Isn't it wonderful? And on the seventh day, God laughed and rested and enjoyed his glorious creation. Yes. And then to those closing pages of scripture and to those words attributed to Jesus' friend and disciple, John. Now an old man, as tradition would have it, John is being shown a picture of what will be. Terrible things will happen. Terrible and terrifying things. But God will do something new. God will speak love into being once more. And everyone will live in peace and joy, drinking from the river of life 
which quenches all thirst. John must surely have felt God's yes to him and the message he'd carried in his heart from all those years ago since first meeting that itinerant preacher with sawdust under his fingernails. God loves the world. God is saying yes to the world. God is saying yes to us. Wasn't Jesus himself God's resounding yes to us all? When you think about it, there are so many more stories than these two in scriptures which tell of God saying yes to us. I'm sure you can think of some. The gospels are full of them. What about the time that Jesus told off his disciples for trying to stop parents from bringing their children for a blessing? Jesus points at the children and reminds his followers that, like him, children are a blessing. Like him, children have kingdom truths to tell. Jesus reminding us of God's yes to all our little ones. Or what about the time Jesus was having dinner with his friends at Simon's house and a woman comes in and disturbs the sensibilities of his host by breaking a jar of expensive perfume and pouring the whole lot over Jesus' feet and kissing them and wiping them with her hair. I thought he was a prophet, Simon sneers. Doesn't he know who she is, what she's done? Jesus looks at the woman. My forgiveness, my peace are yours, he says. God's yes to anyone who's ever made a mistake, especially those whom others look down on for it. These are just two that come to my mind. Perhaps you can take some time yourself in the days to come. Leave through the pages of a gospel, keeping a special eye out for any yes moments. Notice who's in the story, where the yes is. Let the Spirit whisper to you, God's yes is for you too. And if other people come to mind, don't chase them away. Perhaps they need to hear these words too. Perhaps it's you God is calling to show them. I have a feeling sometimes that we're not very good in the church at saying yes to people. But that is our God-given calling. Perhaps we don't always mean it. Perhaps we're just a bit clumsy. Maybe we're even a bit frightened, hiding behind our nose and maybes. But we're meant to be a people who dare to say yes, and it isn't hard. How about these? Will you let me put the kettle on? Which is to say, yes, I hear the story you're telling me. Can I sit next to you? which is to say, yes, we'll help each other. Please come in, you're very welcome, which is to say, I'm so, so glad you're here. Do you know when I pray, I pray for you? Which is to say, yes, I think of you often. You may never know what impact such moments can have in another person's life or how it will stay with them. Tommy might be surprised to know I think of him still. But such moments are within our gift, and the yes within them can carry a person all their days. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the many ways you say yes to us all. Your presence, your wanting not just to be with us, but one with us, one of us even, is more than we can each take in. And we can only whisper, yes. Yes, Lord, we love you too. Filled with your love, may we never be done being a welcome, never done affirming and encouraging, that all might know they too are held in heaven's heart. 
through Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer all our worship today and in the week to come. Amen. Our final hymn together this morning is hymn 533, Will You Come and Follow Me? Um, And I've asked that we leave out the second verse today, just because you might have had enough of singing behind the masks. Um, So hymn 533, and today we're leaving out verse 2. serve the Lord. You are God's yes in a world hungry for hope. The blessing of God, maker, mender, muse, is with you for now and for always.